So it looks like we're ready to start. Um, I'd like to let's let's try leaving them open and just see what kind of traffic noise we get. We'll just have to talk loud. Right. So it's uh, 6:04. I'd like to open up the meeting. Um, are there any adjustments at all to the agenda? Anything? I don't have Okay. I have a, a couple. Um, I thought maybe at the end with the updates and other business, we just might have a short discussion about uh, the Delta COVID and just kind of thinking ahead about um, what we might want to do or not do or just... Um, um, and then um, it sounds like Chuck wants, has this on his agenda too, but I thought maybe we would start a discussion on uh, purchase of a new truck um, tonight. Just to... Okay, well, um, I just want to bring it up and, um, um, and uh, just have a very brief discussion about it. No decisions, of course, but just that. Uh, and that's pretty much all I have. Um, guys have anything? No, I'm well, okay. Any public comment? Don't hear any? Okay. That's good. Um, so, um, do I hear a motion to approve the bills to the town? So, a second. second. All those in, any discussion about the bills at all? Um, all those in favor, uh, say aye. 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 All right. Um, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes for the July 26, 2021 select board meeting? So moved. I'll second. Sir. Um, any discussion about the minutes at all? Okay, we're good. Um, so all those in favor of approving the July 26, 2021 uh, select board meeting minutes, uh, say aye. 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 And now I'm reminded of another adjustment to the agenda. Um, the village, Woodbury Village Stormwater Mitigation Final Design Reviews are not going to happen this evening. Um, one of the, the person from the Regional Planning Commission was not feeling well. Um, and um, there was a little confusion about the projector that we would be using and whether we had the right cables. And um, we hadn't really tested it out. So we have postponed. Um, that agenda item for uh, August 23rd. So next on the agenda is a town clerk report. I have spent the majority of my last two weeks still cleaning up the checklist. Mm -hmm. how's, it, how's that going? Is that a pain Pretty in good. The... I went from 150 that I had problems with, I'm down to 18. Oh, wow. Very good. She's so, tired of staring at the paper yet. <laughs> computer screen. <laughs> and I printed out uh, yeah, right, a checklist that I'm going to have Diana look over to make sure I printed the right one. Okay. I compared it to the 2019, and I think I have the right one. So, and we did receive back the signed contract for Washington County Sheriff's Department. Okay. Yeah. Have we received back a signed contract from the painter for the library roof? The roof? You got the roof? The roof? Yeah, the roofer. That one is back. It right? is back. Yes. Okay, good. I, okay, good. Yep. Yep. Just making sure that we have it. We've done it. Okay, good. So will they be submitting the invoices or do, yeah, can they? Well, uh, the roofer? Yes. What but they, they want yeah. a third, but it, I'd like an invoice. Okay, what they mentioned is, is that they would be asking for the one third deposit when the shingles came in. Mm -hmm. So, and the, the projected date that they were given by the supplier was August 24th. Okay. So, um, I just didn't want to let them know that I wasn't paying them. No, no, they're going to well, notify. We'll check. That's how it works. Yeah. They'll be notifying us that the that the shingles are in, and then they'll um, they'll be wanting to check then. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. the in between doing my checklist, I've been working with Diana on the land recordings. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Do you, can you tell me what's happening in the parking area in front of the town office? We're gonna have office. a swimming pool. 
You're putting a <laughs> hole in that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> is there, is there a break in the water line to the no, turn? Somebody's water line, we figured out who's jacked. Oh, they got a hole. What are we talking about? Uh, maybe you jump in ahead of yourself. The leech field from the Death Cut's office between the road and that parking lot. Uh huh. So that may be the leech field. The leech field for the town office? And it looks to me it don't run all the time. It ain't been running for the last 10, 12 hours. Uh huh. And it didn't over the weekend. Looking to me, it's like it's more like the leaf field is fault than backing up there in the road. Mm. And it's not showing because the septic tank you know, is higher and the, right. and the bathroom is higher. Yep. Now, I don't know, but that's my guess right now. Okay. So when a leach field no longer leaches, um, what does that mean? Put a new one in somewhere. It means. You either got to take that one out and clean the stone out and mm -hmm. get the dirt all cleaned out and put new sand in and new stone and new pipe. And being that close to 14, you're probably going to have to have an engineer. Yeah. Okay. But if, it's a, if it's a site with a limited space, you, know, you don't have to bring it up to the modern standards for a second. You have to do the best you can. Right. But being that close to the highway, I'm sure somebody's going to be, want to be involved in it. That yeah, must be I, right. It's right on the road. And the Route 14 right of way, too, I would imagine. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's the right. retrain permit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, my plan is tomorrow we're going to, uh, we'll get, let's put that on hold for a few minutes. Okay. Yeah. All right. You have, okay. Um, you know, technically that's not a town highway issue. So, um, but we'll talk about it later. The lead field to... The, the town. town office is not a town issue? Not a town highway issue. Oh, yes, I know. Okay. That's why I won't talk about it later. Okay, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> when would you like to talk about it? <laughs> we'll do it when you ask me what the hell that's all about. Should I make an adjustment to the agenda? We'll fill well, it in. Yeah, yeah, it seems like it needs well. to be discussed if it's, uh, we got bubble and crude. In the we'll we'll tag right. it with the town hall discussion. How's that sound? Well, yeah. we can do it now. I just didn't want any other problems with Randy before they got done. Okay, so let's do it after the town clerk and town treasurer report. Okay. All right. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Anything else, Robin? No. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Robin at all? Well, I can get the postcards in today for oh, good. the urgent. Yeah. yeah. You'll have to buy some postcard stamps too. They're not stamped. Not stamped. No. We stamped them for return. Okay. Okay. All right. Town treasurer's report. <laughs> so, uh, for income, cash receipts, um, total that was taken in was $2,829.16. That's detailed records restoration, copies at cost, green map passports, land records reporting, land recording copies, posting land, prepaid taxes, vault fees, and vital records. Uh, delinquency taxes was $449. That does not include the interest and penalty. Um, Direct deposits that were put into our bank account. Da -da -da. The ARPA first deposit of $46,219.64 wow. was put into our checking account. Wow. Wow. Also, um, the state that is toward property taxes was $2,580 even. And once the tax rate is set, then I will take that off our, our current tax revenue that's mm -hmm. um, I kicked over 7000 over into the money market. Um, and as you can see on your balance sheet, um, there is roughly 36000 in there, and I will be doing another transfer tomorrow mm -hmm. over into the money market. Um, so, I was tidying up 
closing out the fiscal year ish, I have one more transaction I need to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know, 2108 files, so all of fiscal year 21 can be audited. And then it's off to tax bills, which I'm hoping to get out by this Friday. Wow, okay. So will the audit be by our town auditor? Yes, since we didn't budget for an outside audit. Right. Okay. But right now we still currently have only one. Only one, right. Mm -hmm. And now I guess the volunteers. Please come to the office. Do we know if we need to have more than one auditor? Yes, we do. We do. So technically we can't do the audit. Correct. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> um, maybe we should put something on front porch forum and see if there are other auditors or other people willing to sit in on that. Maybe we could con. Yeah. Yeah. So then we did after town meeting. We had put something out. Mm -hmm. Right. No takers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's our the one auditor that we have. I know his issue was that he would is usually sailing far away when it's time to do the audit. So do we know if he's even in Woodbury at the moment? I haven't heard from him. Yeah. I sent him an email uh, last week, but I haven't heard from him. Mm -hmm. Mary, what's our date again? What's that? What's our date? What's our date? Yeah. As far as completing the audit, yeah. uh, our our town report has to be printed. By December. By December. Yeah, right. so we have some time. Yeah. I mean, it's a, yeah. So we have year a year ends <coughs> between now and. Basically, between now and now in December, we can find something. Yep. We're not going to audit, but still need, doesn't, doesn't replace the need to have town auditors. Right, right. No, I don't disagree. Um, but if so, you have an outside audit, we don't need town auditors. Well, yeah, you still do. Yeah. Right. Towns that I know of that have outside audit do not have Right, but some a lot of they, towns have actually that gone sense. to outside auditors because they have a hard time finding right. people to do that. So yeah. I'm thinking off the top of my head now. Yeah, we're not budgeted to do well. Yep, yeah, we we have nothing budgeted at all, but we do have twenty eight thousand dollars that we didn't have to spend on winter sand. Well, that's the highlight. Yes, but could we, can we take from the highway budget to, we can't do that. Okay, so, all right. And, but we did have money left over in the general budget, 20,000 something dollars? Yes, I have used it in, on your balance sheet. We're at a negative 58,000, 50, no, 61,000 in the general because of expenses that we paid um, starting July 1. Okay. So we're basically kind of dipping into our kitty until the taxes come in, right? Yep. Um, but we could use that 20, theoretically, we could use that $20,000 to yes. hire an auditor. But typical when we did go out for... We went out to bid a couple of years ago. I remember, yeah. Yes. Uh, we only it with some of the colors. Yep. It's a three-year contract, yeah. starting off with 18000 It's a lock-in for three years. Yeah. Um, we may be up against that here. Yeah, I mean, we could put it out to bid and just see what comes hmm? what comes back. Hmm? I can send you the bid, just change the date. No, just that, that okay. may be what's wise to do here, because I can't, mm -hmm. if we don't have enough auditors to do an audit, right. we've got to do an audit. We've got to do an audit. And in order to replace the town auditors with uh, annual private sector audit. I think that has to go to the voters. That's yeah, true. That's but true. I just wonder what you're supposed to do if you don't have auditors to do the audit. I think we just have to do what needs to be done. That's basically. what I think too. If somebody wants to hang us for it, then um, let's... We'll let them volunteer to be an auditor. Right. Then we'll have two. Yeah, we'll sign them up. Um, I don't know what else to do. No. Because I don't think we can go to the town meeting without having audited the board. Right. This sounds like a question for VLC. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. I don't think we have to decide that tonight. So. No. Um, but, so we'll 
continue discussing this, figure out a way. We should probably put it on next week's, next two weeks agenda. We will, yeah, it'll be on the agenda. Do you want to sign on votes? Sure, yeah, please. Yeah, please. I, I may have it. You may not. Okay, all right. I'll say that just change the dates. Okay. I just don't know what else to do. No, not a lot of options. We can't do it, so. All right, we can. Okay. I yeah, think it's yeah. mutually exclusive to our jobs as we approve the expenditures. Yeah. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. Conflict of interest. Offices. It's conflict of interest. Um, thankfully. Huh? Thankfully. <laughs> They're smarter than we are. Okay. All right. So, um, anything else, Brandy? We will. We're our. I do have tagged to set the tax rate. So we are having some conflicts with our current email. Right. Um, so the town officials, so the treasurer, the clerk, the listers, the assistant clerk, will all be getting, and the highway, will all be getting new emails. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully and, as soon as next Monday. Right. And can you explain the new system, just for the record? It's through the, our town website? I if I understand right? It's a form. It's, it's going to be using the same Thunderbird email system that we have been using. It's just that the server is going to be different. Yeah, and who? We won't have Comcast. We won't have Comcast. Right. And this whole issue came around because I cannot send out emails. Yes, I, I learned that the hard way. <laughs> so the skip is yeah. uh, sick of dealing with Comcast. Yeah. Impossible. They don't respond to his inquiries, is from my understanding. So, who will be the new server? It's dot org. That, other than that, I'm no IT. Okay. Because I know Skip's been working with Ben Witt. Our, yep. our ben mm -hmm. took on, he's going to be our IT guy now. Okay. He's Good. He's moving, but he will, yeah, he's willing to stay on to. Okay. Be our back and call when our computers. Oh, fail. that's nice of him. So mm -hmm. he said that he's going to be able to forward our current emails and be forward just to the new, straight to the new one. So there won't be any loss as far as escrow companies or the state sending information. Okay, cool. So that will also be on our new, our new emails will be on the website. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is our credit card machine is up and running. Um, so I will also put that on the website, have Ben do it. And if anybody is interested in the direct uh, debit, as far as taxes uh, for the account, the form will be on the website. So mm -hmm. I don't, I won't spend making 863 copies and inserting it with every tax bill. Um, mm -hmm. Now did Ben say, if, let's say I sent Michael an email, or Michael sent me an email, and it pops over to that new email address. Is he going to get notified that I have a new email address? What I usually tell people to do is put it in your uh, name at the bottom to say, pay attention, I have a new email address. Just put a note at the bottom of your, your name. Yeah, you can probably show us how to do that. Your signature. Mm -hmm. Maybe could, you have sort of an email tree that you started, a town email list? Yeah. yeah. Maybe we could send a notification out yeah. on that. Yeah, that's what I'm on Okay, yeah. So I can't send it out? Huh? So I can't send it out? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> that's the end of that one. <laughs> oh, weird. It doesn't make much sense to me why I can't send emails out, but Brady and Diana can. Because you broke it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's just your luck. It must be. You don't need me. Sometimes you things on that computers better. don't make sense. You're right. No, sometimes. Um, I know Skip said, Skip Marcassoni sent me a bunch of emails um, that I've never received. So, I don't know what's going on. Comcast. Uh, okay. Um, anything else, Brandy, at all for? No. Okay. So, um, tagged onto the town treasury report is setting the uh, tax rate for um, the next fiscal year, fiscal year 22. 
Um, and in our town uh, report um, and approved at, uh, I guess it was approved by Australian ballot this year, because um, we didn't have a town meeting, um, the tax rate uh, that was approved was um, 0 0.546 um, cents per, per uh, what's that, a thousand dollars worth of property. Um, so uh, I guess what we need is a motion to approve that amount. I think you need to refigure it. We need to, now that there's a new grand list amount. Right, does she have a number to, with the new grand list? And take your total amount that's budgeted right. and the new grand list amount. I forget which one goes on top and which one goes on the bottom. But right. That, that a number that was in the town report was just It was off the old grand list, yeah. yeah. Do you have that figure, Brandy? I don't have that figure. Okay. Um, All right. So. I think we um, have one more transaction to deal with um, as far as the listers. I think he, I thought he gave you the final. He had the grievance. He had one more grievance. Right. You can't say okay, so it's that, yeah, so it sounds like um, we need to get the new grand list total and. Um, do a quick calculation and probably have a special select board meeting to sure. approve the. Okay, um, so we'll turn, you want to get tax bills out on Friday, so we could do this Thursday. Thursday. Okay. Thursday. Why don't I drive down to the town office? Where we can finish tonight. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That sounds good. Where are you talking to the camera? I just plug into the. We've got iPhones around here. We can, yeah, we can we calculate. Can. I don't know if I'm smart enough to do it, but the phone was somebody, somebody should take. So who who remembers the formula? I have it on a piece of paper, but I didn't I didn't bring it with me. Just one divided by the other. Right. Okay. One way doesn't make any sense to do it the other way. Is the formula on that? Yes. So <laughs> and so, everybody has it. So just one. Okay, so, so yeah. Is this the formula? Yes. This is the formula. This is the formula. Yeah. This takes your expenses, minus your revenues. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is the formula. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The grand list and equals out to the, the municipal tax rate, tax on 100,000 parcel. So yeah, okay. it, it does it down to the, I just want to verify the grand list if it's changed. Up. Okay, so. And that's why we're yeah. So we'll we'll still be here, I think. Oh, yeah. If you want to go get it, um, and then um, and then we'll just do it do it when you get back. Okay. All right. Um, anything else? Any questions for Brandy at all about the town treasurer report? All right. So um, so we can move on yes. to the. Um, yes. Sure. It's going to be the municipal tax rate. Right. right. Yes, that's right. That's all yeah. we can deal with. That's all we can deal with. The state does the school. The education is our Yeah, the education is. is the legislature does that for us. Yeah, we can't touch that. We just, yeah. we just get told. Yeah. Yeah. We don't. Just get told. Yeah. yeah. It's an informal informational thing. Just tell me. So, Chuck, I guess we're ready for the town highway report. Uh, we've been working on Foster Road over there, Foster Hill Road. That's been between last year and this year. It's been done from top to black top all the way to the top of the hill. Yep. All new colors, all new gravel, ditch. Uh, she's probably got another half a day of high receding, mm -hmm. and now we'll finish that up. Mm -hmm. um, we're over here to school now. We dug at dug on that firehouse today, and it doesn't look great. Right. So. Tomorrow that's coming out. Right? Mm -hmm. And the white rock? Yeah. We can bring it up to your front yard. So I have no idea, but it, <laughs> I'm glad you're here because you want it in one of these parks? I don't know. How big is it? I'm big enough so we're gonna to have to get the quarry down here and move it from it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there a nice place for it? Oh yeah? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we're the tomorrow if it comes out, it's going inside that new settlement pond over here. 
in front of the annex building yeah. until we decide what's going on. So you get a few days. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah. We're going to box that sign up tomorrow and probably Wednesday we'll move that. And by the end of the week, I'm hoping that the practice will pretty well. Wow, great. Thing. I'm hoping. Yeah. Um, and then there's the town hall subject down there. Mm -hmm. um, Robin talked to Gary. Gary yeah. Clark. Yeah. And he thinks that his water is working all right. Gary Clark. Right. Yeah. yeah. Gary Clark. Yeah. And the only other thing I can think of, if it's not a water line, it's got to be that leach field. But we're not getting any smell from it. And right. usually with a leach field, you will. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that, that the septic tank was just pumped out last fall, how that, won't make, that won't make any difference with the leach field. The, right. I mean, it has to, the septic tank has to fill up first before it starts draining to the leach field. Well, and you don't think that's full of the year? Yeah. But it, it could be because the septic tank, septic tank was full, that maybe some of what was well, in the septic tank. I'm, I'm not really leaning towards it being the leach field, mm -hmm. but Greg and I talked about it, and I wanted to say something to you before I went ahead and did it, but I think I'm going down Wednesday with my excavator and dig it up and find out what it is. Right. I seem to recall that being a problem with Gary with water line to that house right across the front. Yeah, forever. Huh. I think Gary's water comes from from the hill um, back behind it. Yeah. I don't know. Under, but, you know, below George Sawyer, that field. I think it comes from that. Well, last year he was looking out in on the other on this area. side of the church. Yeah. yeah. Is it? Okay. okay. Used to years ago. Used to come up from, from behind the church. Okay. Don Mason and that one were on the same spread. Oh, okay. Years ago, but. All right. Well, we I should. Been, we do anything in there right now for We should check in with Gary because um, I know that last year his spring dried up. Right. Um, and it didn't sound like, of course, nobody's in the Mason house, so they wouldn't know. Um, well, they had me on it. Yeah. Did. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, we should find out from Gary which, where that spring is. And it sounds like it was and probably still is from, you know, behind the town office somewhere. I would guess sure. it is. And Don Mason, uh, well, Mason House. Mm -hmm. Brandy has a map of that that shows the water line, the one behind the town hall. The okay. Mason House. Town office? Yeah, yeah. Back to town, yeah, town office. Okay. So that, I believe, is out back. Okay. Mm. But irregardless whether it's Gary's or not, we've got to, kind of got to figure out what it is. Yeah, I mean, I think you can go in and see if you can see what it is. That makes sense. Yeah. At least if we got to do something, I'd rather get started and wait than wait till November. Yeah, well, yeah technically, if it's Gary Clark's yeah. water line, it's kind of his, right. his, his problem. problem. We need to start yeah. getting it. True. Sure. But yeah. I would. You didn't answer the question. I, I, you didn't answer the question really fast. With yeah, two okay. scoops. Two 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 scoops. Keep track of your hours you may be billing Gary Clark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I'll keep track. Okay. Um, I'll call him in the morning and talk with him. And, okay. But I really don't, it, it could be the lead field, but I really don't think it is because there's no you smell. You don't smell it, you smell it. Yeah, it looks pretty clean. I mean, it looks pretty yeah. clear. Um, you might, if you're going to call him in the morning, you probably want to call before 7. I know he usually heads to work. Does it? 7, 7. Maybe I'd call it tonight. Yeah, tonight might be better. Yeah. Can I introduce you to Sure. My name is Michael Sadler. I live at uh, 276 Maple Road. Just up, that's our front field right in front of the Yeah. Road. But we have smelled sewage about twice in the past month. Okay. Uh, just walking, walking, up down, walking up and down Maple Road. Well, yeah, it would go from there up that front. Well, you'll know when you take a scoop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It won't take me an hour or so, and I'm going to know what the hell's going on. Okay. Yeah, it'll be, but, you'll know. <laughs> it'll just because off. Gary thinks his water is fine. Doesn't mean it is. Doesn't mean it's fine. It still could be leaking. Yeah. 
It may be part of his problem last summer, too. Could be. If it's leaking underground, it'll empty your spring out. Yeah. Well, yeah, but my concern is if he says he doesn't want it fixed, I mean, we're going to have to think about something. Yeah. That's what I would do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, call it. I can't imagine him not wanting to get it fixed if it's leaking, but yeah. Anyway, keep us posted. I oh, will. <laughs> okay. Um, any anything else, town highway wise? Yeah, uh, a couple are for the the home the quick exchange buckets on the escalator. Mm -hmm. Is wore out, mm -hmm. and we called today and got a price up. It was thirty three hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna end up wearing both buckets out if we don't do something with it. Yeah, we should so fix it. Right? Right. Don't fix, yeah. it. Yeah. fix it. Fix it. With that, fix, fix it. it. Fix, All right. fix it. Well, that, that's, a, that's a good excavator. It is. It's real right. good excavator. Yep. Yeah. So we just done the downward on it, so it'd be foolish not to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Crazy not to. Yeah. It's worth yeah. it, it's it's worth four grand. Uh, oh yeah. But, yeah, I can speak for myself directly. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. worth fixing it. If it All has right. to be fixed. And um, you sell one of the trucks to Channel Boys to get here if you want to. Okay. And last year we put, you guys put $30, $31,000 or something in this truck. And I don't know what it's going to cost this year, but if the truck has got less than 100,000 miles on it, mm -hmm. that truck should be good for a million. So I'm not looking forward to you guys ordering the truck. If you're going to keep what thirty thousand dollars a year, you ain't getting your money back. I guess that was our next well, point. Right? That's part of the reason for having a, a replacement a schedule for trucks. That's right. Because you start sinking as much money or more money into the repairs. Cost you might order a new one. Um, well, except you ought to have the money enough to pay for the first new one. Correct. Uh, that's that was our that was our hope, and and we you know we can look at the figures and see if that might be a possibility, but. That's part of, you know, that's what Hardwick does, other towns do, they say. Yeah, I don't care what Hardwick does. Okay, all right, well. It's our taxes that going out, and if you've got a truck, it should be good for a million miles, and you've only got 100,000 miles on it, and you're going to spend $260,000 for another truck. Well. Um, that ain't the best interest of the town. So you're, you're thinking enough, don't order one right now. I'm saying, uh, wait another year before you order. If, you, so if put it, it two, ends up being, two, what's that? That would put it two years out. That would put it two years out. Right. Matt's well, that's a re recommendation okay. of the road commission. So, yeah. yeah. All right, that's so fine. What, what do you think about what needs to be done? How much are we going to spend on another year's worth of work? I would, it shouldn't be anywhere near 30000 this year mm -hmm. on that one. But we got another one going down right afterwards that is as old as the other one was when it went for 30000 So Yeah. So part of the reason for having a schedule to, um, is to to try to avoid the, you know, eventually you're paying as much in repairs as you would to be paying for a new truck. And then you're dealing with a truck that could break down in the middle of the winter. Um, so that, that's the reason some towns have these replacement schedules and they, and they budget for them. Um, exactly, but we, where's the budget for this one? There's no budget right at the moment. We do have a HERF fund, and yeah. we'll be putting more money into it with fiscal year 22, and we could see how much money is in there. Um, right, and I think in 22, you definitely need to order a truck. So okay. next summer? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So ordering a truck next summer means that we'll have two more winters on both of those trucks, and probably other more winters on this, <coughs> whichever truck we don't replace. Um, so, um, we sent it down there last year, they had no break downs at all this year. Okay, that's why it's good. That's right. good. Not. Okay, and even you know, even if you buy you buy a new truck and it's under warranty and everything else, in four years, about half of the life of what you're figuring you're going to keep a truck four or five years, mm -hmm. it should be down and gone down and gone through. Because that yeah. truck's a year and before, it, and, it, and it has been those yeah, before, not like they did last year, right? Yeah. But you know, part of it is is that when it's gone through, that the, there's a warranty that covers whatever they find that they need to fix. Um, so it's just you know, that's just some of the thinking behind having a 
a replacement schedule. Um, and I agree with you, yeah, yeah. you definitely need one. Yeah. But you get to feed under yourself, so right. you're not we paying kinda, a lot of interest. We yeah. kind of went down this road of going to pay cash for the next truck, so I think. Yeah. I don't that's think, my argument. Correct. We've I mean, talked about this, and that's what was going right, right. So we kind of got to hold our stomach for it and just say, if it costs us twenty grand to repair it, that's still lower than a truck payment. Right. And but we may have enough cash with fiscal year twenty two to pay for a truck. You know, I'm thinking you will. So we, what we got to do is look at the numbers and and kind of discuss this some more. That's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. Um, you know, rather than spend. But we've also, the second issue, we've also got a road commissioner that's recommending that we Yes, and I, and I definitely have an ear for that, but it doesn't mean that we wouldn't have a discussion about that's fair. it. That's fair. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, sure, sure, I get it. Yep. You may yeah. change the line. Uh huh, right. So let's get the numbers. Maybe. Let's get some numbers and look, we'll look at what we'll have in the HERF fund for mm -hmm. um, fiscal year 22. Um, you know, we have a rough idea of what a truck would cost. You know, so uh, just let me finish out this thought about, um, you know, so if we, if we were, so let's say we took a scenario that we would decide that we would replace a truck. Um, so that would be for, um, and we made that decision this summer, fall. Um, we wouldn't have a truck until the following year. To, to basically, what I've been told is that, um, you know, from the time that you make a commitment on a truck, there's a year of waiting for the truck to actually be available. Um, and then we also have set up um, our payments in the past with the contracts for paying for a truck to be happen in October 1st when we're pretty flush with uh, tax money rather than this time of year when we're kind of scraping the barrel and borrowing money to keep things going. Um, so technically, if, if we were to um, purchase a truck, let's say before the winter of um, 2022, 23, um, we could defer the payment until the fiscal year 23 um, or four. Um, so there is ways that we would have even more money in the in the HERF fund. So right, that's why we, let's play with the numbers and just see what what the possibilities are. That's right. But let's okay. keep in mind too that we've got two that you're going to have to replace. Right. Yeah. And that's so that's I am keeping that in mind. That's what worries me. We have yeah. two that we need to replace. Our goal is to get to no payments. That's what we want right. to get to. Right. Yeah. And I you know. And I don't think it's that far. Out no, I don't think that far away. Right. And I'm not. I'm not. Anyway, advocating for raising the taxes to do this, I you know. Um, so, but let's just see what we can do with the with the numbers and see what. So maybe we should start actually making a plan, a schedule for replacing both trucks, and see yeah, what, see what we've got for funds. I um, think we should. Okay. Yeah. And we. And I don't know when the loaders pay down either. That couple couple of years actually. Three years. We looked at that. Yeah, three years before it. Three based years. Based on what I just looked at. And that low growth. Yeah, the low growth is very good. Four years. Four. So the two trucks that will need to be replaced and the two big trucks? Yeah. Yes, yeah. the two big trucks. We got to get them, we also got to get them separated by their exactly. replacement cycle. And that's you that's can't do, we can't keep doing this. Right. What we got to do is get them so if they're if it's an eight-year cycle, you want to be replacing one every seven or eight years. Seven years. Not that's not that's why I'm thinking if we can replace one sooner sure. as opposed to later, conversation. then we have a few years to to stagger it with the other truck if we can. Because they're only that's one year apart. Uh, yeah. yeah, and that ain't the only fire. No, no. And if you take, if you even if you have to put. Uh, on an average of $15,000 a year in each one of them trucks until you can get situated where you can pay for one and go along and mm -hmm. not have two payments right together. Right. I, I, that's where we want to that's, go. That's, that's, that's the goal. Yeah. Yeah. We have the same goal, Chuck. Uh, yeah, I know it. So, so let's warn a meeting, and I don't care if it's next one or the one after, just to have this look at the numbers. Okay. We'll have to see you. All right. We'll see you. Yeah. We can't because we got to get those. Because again, we're going to look at whether yep. if we do one next year and then four years just to kind of get them separate. Yeah, we have to separate them. Yeah, we have to separate them. Check for it. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll, we'll um, work on it. We'll start looking at the what we'll have for money and how we might do that. Um, 
Okay. That drop, if you do, when you do cycle to my line, it'll go out to bed too. Right? Yes, it will go out have to, to go out to bed. Yep. Yep. Do that. Yeah. I don't think we have a choice. Nope. No. Just some policy. Of course. Yeah. It's got to go out to bed. All right. That's yep. good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It might not be a Kenny. What's that? It might not be a Ken ones. Well, these are freight liners, but international now that we've got straight up, so I have a chance at it. Yep. So mm -hmm. we're going to have to be flexible on the platform that we, mm -hmm. that we get. Yeah, but basically, except for CAD, I'll you can say get any motor transmission you want in any of those programs. Yeah, yeah, you can pretty much do what you want. So yeah. we're going to have to you know, be willing to be flexible to a degree based on the data. So if we were to put it out to bid, would we put it out to bid for the um, cabin chassis and then separate bids for the body? Would that be the way to go? Or yeah, I would think, no, I would think Freightliner would give you a, a bid on so the truck. Give you bid on the truck. Okay. Okay. That's the easiest for us. We're going to bid on the truck. Right? Yeah, complete unit. Well, it would be a complete unit. Would be that would be the smart thing. Get yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Well, there are different companies that also do the bodies. So you can, yeah. yeah. You like, have to separate it. The freight liners that, that we have now were not done by Charlevoix. They were done by somebody else. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess that we'll figure that one yeah. out, too. Yep. Um, yes, Skip. Do we understand or know what the trade-in value for Somewhere the truck that was 16. purchased in I think 2013? That, yeah. I would think that maybe we could make that part of the bidding process yeah. to get a figure from the people bidding. Um, I mean, we know what it was well, a few years ago. Right? Yeah, I yeah. think that if, if we every year we were reported up at 40 to 50. Yeah, every year it gets less. Every year I, I, have, I don't have a clue. Right? But, but we could, that could be part of the bidding process. What will you give us for a trade-in on the old one? Well, definitely. You definitely want to... That would be the only way to get it. Would exactly. Be, right. With them accepting the trade. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll uh, keep that on the agenda and uh, continue to discuss it. Okay. Anything else on the town highway report? Um, just one. Uh, I was wondering. Uh, we talked about getting a survey in, starting and stuff for. Was ha that yeah, I haven't done anything on that yet. But, okay. but yeah, that's still that's on my list. Okay. Yep. Yep. Other than that, I guess not. Okay. All right. Thank you, Chuck. Any? Thanks, hey, sir. No questions for Chuck then. Okay. So um, next on the agenda is a cycling hazard mitigation opportunity with Michael and Skip. Well, thank you for having us. Uh, Michael and I are both members of the Planning Commission, and we're in the throes of writing a new town plan. And we decided that it would be a good idea to be proactive and mitigate the hazard that Michael's finding on our gravel roads and when he bicycles. Mm -hmm. uh, and we made, well, Michael put this presentation together, and I'd like Michael to if he could to go over it, because he's a bicycle rider and I'm more of a, not a bicycle rider. Right, so more of a he knows, rider. he knows exactly where the hazards are and we have some literature on how to mitigate those hazards. Mm -hmm. so, if you would. Okay, um, as Skip said, I'm on the planning commission and uh, an avid cyclist, I probably um, riding Woodbury dirt roads just about every day, every other day. And a couple of opportunities, I've just selected seven that could use uh, potential a little bit more signage to make drivers aware that there are cyclists in an oncoming lane. Uh, some of these have, some of these turns have apexes that people like to cut. You'll find people head on to you in the oncoming lane, whether you're in a car or in bicycle, on a bicycle. Uh, the first location, well, the proposed cost, I think, is uh, important to go over first, about $840. Seven intersections, two signs per intersection, $60 per sign. Um, location number one is Cabot Road at the very top of the hill. Uh, location two, King Pond Road, just north of the intersection of Foster Hill Road. Location three is that uh, almost... Uh, that, that blind curve, Tebbets Hill Road by King Pond. The fourth is uh, Cranberry Meadow. There's a 
blind turn just off of the county road, although you could pick any spot on Cranberry Meadow. Mm -hmm. uh, Dog Pond Road, just south of Valley Lake, is location number five. Again, a stretch of road from, um, from the intersection of Valley Lake back to uh, where Valley Lake actually, I think that's Valley Lake, where Dog Pond comes out towards Tebbets Hill. Um, you can pick any spot there. Uh, location six is the county road just south of Dog Pond Road. And then there's a big blind descent on Valley Lake uh, that does have some signage, but uh, probably worth noting that uh, it's tight enough and at a sharp enough aspect that folks need to kind of take up. Folks do need to cut that apex a little bit, um, even going the post even going the post permit, which I think is 35 on that road. That particular spot, Michael, is the one where we're thinking of creating a new section of road right. to eliminate that corner. Okay. But that, it's going to take a couple years for that to happen. Yeah. yeah. Understood. Uh, At least one year. The selected sign is this um, cyclist may use full lane, which is a pretty common sign and increases sort of the cyclist perception of where their correct position is. It can be hard to tell on a road with no shoulder where you're supposed to be. Um, especially with drivers oncoming or behind you. Is that a new cyclist one? Cyclists may use full lane. Full lane, okay. Yeah. Like both lanes Do you think someone would understand what that sign is telling them when they came upon it? Yes. A motorist or a cyclist? A motorist. Both. I think so. It's a dumb question for me. These are proven uh, corrective yeah. action. Okay. Yeah, stuff. It's not, we're not making this is something that's been used elsewhere. There's, there's a whole page uh, Okay, it's not a thought. I'm just getting your table on it. It's very likely the world doesn't No, I think, I think it is, and it helps to, um, it helps give you confidence as a cyclist okay. to position yourself in a more prominent mm -hmm. spot in the road. Um, and there's some literature that we've included here um, that I think speaks to that and speaks to the benefit of this sign over a share the road sign mm -hmm. or another mm -hmm. sign that maybe, you know, you feel there, there, there's, they're oversigned and they're maybe not doing the right job anymore. Um, cost estimate, 840 bucks. So that's a material cost. Yeah. So if you hit it, I hit it with a factor of 1.5. So the total installed cost would be $1,260. Mm -hmm. That equates to approximately 17 man hours mm -hmm. to install the sign. And that's at $25 an hour. I don't know what the road crews for our wages, but I factored in twenty five dollars mm -hmm. an hour. Mm -hmm. So you that amount included the labor cost? Yeah, yes. thirteen hundred like thirteen hundred or so includes the twelve hundred and sixty cost. Twelve sixty material. Okay. Yeah. And these signs are approved by the ready for this? N U T C M U T C D. Manual on uniform traffic control. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, so. Okay. That's a Department of Transportation mm -hmm. yeah. speak that says you can use any one of these signs for bicycles. So, what we should be using is bicycles may be used for one. Okay. So, um, so that just, I'm just still trying to understand the language on the sign. So, that's pretty much telling a motorist that. There may be a bicycle in the lane. Um, they sh yes, they should expect a cyclist in the center of that lane. lane. Yeah. Of the, yeah, so we basically have lane and a half roads. That's actually the best spot on the road for a cyclist, <clears throat> I find. Not in a ditch. <laughs> yeah. No, because the, yeah. of the... It's just the grid. Um, it's nice and smooth there on the crown. And it's, it should be It should be noted that even, even when everyone's playing nicely, the cyclist is disadvantaged from a, like, from a, a lane positioning standpoint because they're usually riding on the least compacted portion of the road. Yeah, and if you were to lose control, you would be falling into, yeah, the into, into a ditch. Yeah. Or a lane. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. That's my, that's my fear is that I'm falling into a lane. Yeah. yeah. The ditch I think I could handle. That. Yeah. But not into the middle of the lane. So, um, I know that we budget for signs and I'm just a little short if I can find that. But, um, Chuck, does this seem like a doable thing for the road crew to 
put on the zoning, have it on the highway budget to purchase these signs. And I mean, I, I use my beaver rounds in the morning. Of course, it's early in the morning, but I go down Cranberry Meadow Road and come back down Dog Pond Road every morning. On your bike? On my bike. Oh. Yeah. And I'm aware of these blind, some of these blind spots, and there are actually others that. Um, yeah. Did research the cost of beaver crossing signs. Too. <laughs> <laughs> we could. Well, we, we could see that for the beaver bridges. Yeah. yeah. Well, the regulation states that they need to be a, at least 100 feet from Michael Gray's house in all directions. <laughs> okay. Well, the beaver don't follow me home, thankfully, but uh, <laughs> not yet. Not yet. And actually, if a couple of them get nipped, then that'll just kind of help with the overpopulation. <laughs> um, if the select board wishes, we could send the website where we can purchase the signs okay. and the associated costs and the polls, if that's something you would like us to do. And send it to Chuck. Because I don't believe the planning commission can order any equipment. Right, that. Now probably would be up to the highway department to, to order them. Um, any? I, I'm good with it. I mean, I get a lot of bike, bicycle people going by my house. It's I have a lot of people going by my house. We can too. make the road a better, really safer place, place, and I think it's something we ought to do. So I'll make a motion that we. Uh, I just have a quick question. The sign that's like you had to explain it. Is there a pictorial? Of that sign? Yeah, there's a bicycle. That's we, it? Yeah, it's got a bicycle. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, it's just, a, it's just a simple icon of a bicycle and then the full text maybe is full lane. That's what happens. It's a universal sign that's been tried out and it works. And so I'll, I'll make the motion that we move forward with the, the project at a cost of around $1,300. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Any more discussion on the, the motion? Chuck? He's going to throw a chair at us and they got enough to do already. But. I know you have lots to do. No, I that don't bother me. No. They won't, they won't take the whole thing long to do that. Uh, okay, all those in favor, um, say aye. 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 All right, so time to approve. Okay. Good proposal. Nice job. Yep. You know, I see a lot of people walking the roads too, which is. Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of that going right now, a lot of biking, a lot of walking. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of young mothers with children and usually a dog in tow, especially, you know, by my house anyway. Um, the county road's full of people. So, yeah. So I think this is a good thing. Yeah. The yeah. start of signs for, you know, slowing people down a little bit wouldn't be so bad. Yeah. <coughs> so on the subject of slowing people down, um, Mary has a concern about Route 14 speeding. That, um, I have a dust and um, I spoke with um, Senator Kirchler yeah. and um, Senator Andrew. Cummings and have written to both of them and received replies back. Um, Can you share the issue? Oh, I've also spoken with um, uh, uh, Jeremy Flanders up at the Swenson mm -hmm. Quarry. Quarry yeah. um, I was Quarry. not able to get in touch with Dan Dallas, and he's, the, he's one of the uh, independent contractors. Mm -hmm. Well, Jeremy should be able to. Yeah, Jeremy would be. He's a, he's he's a four well, Jeremy is extremely um, uh, receptive and mm -hmm. he's cooperative. He's usually and, pretty great. And he's the one that oversees the truck right. drivers. His, his, his position was you know, look, the guys come in our yard, but then they leave and they're on their own, mm -hmm. which is perfectly. Right, they don't, That's a normal they don't thing. They have no control over the one that's in the yard. Yeah. We did touch on the fact that if they don't obey the speed limit, they could mm -hmm. lose their contract, mm -hmm. which is a very, um, it's draconian. Mm -hmm. But that could be a last resort. Right. We cannot change the speed signs because the town is not incorporated. What? What? Skip did a lot of research into that. Yeah, I don't think that's actually okay. true. I was told by you. No. Yes. Yes. Oh. I was told by Diana. And we're a municipality. They don't have to be incorporated. Right. Well, we I'm not trying to argue that. I'm just right. trying to get on the facts. Okay. All right. 
organized here, but we can't ask the state to lower the speed limit right. on Route 14 for a reason. My understanding of that reason was that because we were not like uh, East Montpelier or... Hmm. So the speed limit yeah. has been lowered. It was only Not lowered to, to 40 a few years ago after yes. a lot of lot of traffic came on that road. Okay, road. so, um, so there is a process. There is. The, mm -hmm. It should be lowered again. We have the MBI trucks that start early. We have the asphalt haulers, yep. which is a brand new presence. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're those long, long, and they're <coughs> very heavy, and mm -hmm. they go very and mm -hmm. then you have these dump trucks that are like, they're dust, these are industrial trucks. Right. But There's also a really interesting report on in the state of Michigan, and then there was another study done in New Jersey that just talks about and, and demonstrates through numbers and, and assessments and uh, uh, real-time studies how much damage these trucks do to the road. Which in turn is then thrown onto the taxpayer to repair. Mm -hmm. Then you have the chance for accidents. We have a lot of cyclists past the lake. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of old elderly couples. I don't walking. go on Route 14 with my bicycle. There you go. And mm -hmm. you never see yeah. somebody with a baby carriage because it's too dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's terrifying. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of wildlife there. There are dogs. There's an organic farm. Mm -hmm. The exhaust cannot be doing them any good. So there's all these pretty concrete reasons why the speed limit is an issue. It's uh, property values. If I had to sell my house and they were standing there watching these trucks go by, you gotta be kidding me. I wouldn't pay for it. If I had known, I wouldn't have bought it. <laughs> so if the trucks were going at the speed limit that's posted now, um, would it be as much of an issue? Well, like they said in Hollywood, why did you bother lowering it to 25? If they don't obey 30, well, they always go five miles more. So if you lowered it to 35, then it'd only be going 45, mm -hmm. which is a big difference from 15 to 55. Mm -hmm. um, maybe another speed sign there. You have one that's further up the road near that bend. We did talk originally about having one kind of in the middle. Um, but so, which it, would be interesting. It would take two because you'd have to one each side. Yeah, you have that one on each side. One yeah. each side. So it would be two on each side. It's a safety issue. Mm -hmm. It's a taxpayer dollar issue. Mm -hmm. um, and it's an environmental issue. Mm -hmm. It's an enforcement issue. The enforcement. Yes, well. I mean, I can't go standing there and ask for the That's our struggle because we that can't is, get enforcement. That yeah, is that's, another, that's another issue that we yeah, are actually. I went to Middlesex Parish and spoke with the trooper. But he explained that they're really short. The oh. really short staff just sent out an email. He said he would send out an email and uh, they would see what they could do. Then I saw another state trooper on Route 302 in the parking lot at um, Panera, is it? Panera Bread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I stopped to chat with him and he said, Yes, I got the emails. But they're so short staff, they cannot. And we're at like the wrong end of it. Right. We, it takes us, like, we have a rash record and they waited an hour and 10 minutes for the police to get there. Right. So, and that's true of all, not just the state police, but our, the Washington County Sheriff's Department. Now, my understanding is that we pay, there was a contract, and then every time they come out, we have to pay them an hourly rate. Yeah, that right? that's right. right. That's too expensive. No. Yeah. They do it. That's the way it is, Mary. No, the point of the contract. No, why just so we the contract? No, no, just so what you, what we, oh, what you, so you understand, we only pay them when they come. The contract just says the hourly rate they're going to charge. Right. Uh, and we did just, you know, okay. we did try to see if we could contract with Hardwick PD. Well, um, I'm glad I'm saying this. Yeah, question. but unfortunately they got defunded somewhat, so there's no... Because there's four, no four of their officers left the left staff, so they're staff. short staff. Yeah. And we've asked Washington County Sheriff's Department to come more. We actually budgeted quite a bit of money a few years ago for them to be actually have more presence here and they weren't able to they live up to the contract. Actually live up to the contract. So the enforcement is, is an issue. We um, so right at the moment with our contract, which we just signed at our last meeting with the Washington County Sheriff's Department, 
the town, we budgeted $5,000 for the um, coming fiscal year. And at that, with their new hourly rate, that gives us about three hours of time that they're present per week. Per week. So we could ask them to be down by Woodbury Lake. Um, we could, and one thing that would be helpful to them is if you have a sense of a time during the day. It's the worst. Grand trips start really early. Okay. They start before it is light. And it's the so, trucks you're having the most trouble with. Well, the grand trucks, I mean, they're, when they're loaded, they're heavy. Yeah, they're heavy, yeah. And they're heavy. It's a window shape. It is, it's actually not our local trucks, though. Okay. It's not our local trucks. No, it's our, it's, it's our, it's our, it's our Quebec trucks that are coming. That's what I said, they're independent contracts. Yes, no, no, no. A lot of these so are coming out of Quebec. They're, a lot coming, of they're, they're, they're the coming right down from Chabrac. Right. So it's harder to enforce in terms of timing. But if we have time, then we have an impetus for them to come at a specific time. This that right. can work. Those are the two big ones. So we, we can make that work. Go ahead, sketch. Yes, yeah, I have the capability of recording speed yeah, and time, do. which we just got to read it off. There was right, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, 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 I downloaded download the more. software, which supposedly would allow me to do that, but I just can't connect. It's all Bluetooth. I can't connect to any of the signs to get that information. Mm -hmm. So, going back to the manufacturer and asking. You know, how to do it, I think, is my next step. Mm -hmm. But well, Mary, if we had some, if, if we requested for some of our time to be dedicated to between like 4 and 6 a.m., we, we could do that. We, we could make that request. Three, it's it's just not it's, four yeah. to six. Four. Well, the, the trucks in the quarry are definitely not coming down the hill at four. I mean, I, yeah. I live right. off of right. 14, and at four, I usually am up at four o'clock, and it's really nice and quiet. Um, and then when you get around five, you have five, yep, yeah, five, six, seven. <clears throat> um, that's when it gets pretty we noisy. Also have uh, um, <laughs> Yeah, you have, I mean, so, I mean it's, it's, a, it's a wild time between five and eight. people are on their hurry, on the hurry getting to yeah, it's not just tractors. No, it's everything. No, I passed six cars going by me this morning. So there. maybe it's all right if we ask for a specific window. Yeah, I, I think yeah. we could do that. And that early morning window might be... But well, I sure. wouldn't have high expectations. This has been a real struggle for us. Yeah, well, this is not the first time we've heard this and we also you know Robin read a letter from a person that lives here in the village with the same complaints um, but uh, the Washington County Sheriff's Department has said if we can give them a window of time when it would be effective for them to be there there they would do their best to be there they can park, they can park on my driveway they'll make them park. <laughs> the Don't forget the down, <laughs> Trucks come down at about what, seven or so. Yeah. Seven or so. And Eight. then they make a second trip. And they usually yep. two or three of them at a time. The trucks go up usually at six o'clock in the morning after this car. Yeah, they're going to load. Come they're going to be back down off there before seven, or they're going to wait up here right. until the school is done. Yeah, seven o'clock that they're moving. They're heading yeah. down. And why seven? Yeah. And they go down through and then they're coming back up. It's usually 9.30 or so, they're back up here with the second load. Mm -hmm. So that second load. But mm -hmm. as far as like, I, well, I've followed Donnie Gallison a lot and I know him real well. I don't believe, maybe he's, he doesn't even have a J brake anymore. He has a brake saber that's on the engine. So, who are we talking about, Don Gallison? Yeah. 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 So, so, I don't. To, to single him out, I don't know. No, 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 I'm not saying, I did not single him out. Well, he was just, he was just named in the chain of information. But Mary, I think the thing, and I would be glad to make the call to Jeremy Flanders to let him know that people in town, especially people with Long Route 14, are complaining about the speed of the granite trucks, and he can tell yeah. all of the drivers. Yeah, it's all. Well, he, but yeah, we can't, I mean, 
I don't know what we'll be able to do uh, other than Washington County Sheriff's giving them tickets. I think, but I think the answer is get the sheriff, give them that window. I'm afraid, afraid that that's the answer. The, the answer is the window. Washington County Sheriff actually ticket a train and train? Yes, of course. Sure. For speed. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, again, ticket anybody. They can ticket anybody. Where does the ticket record go? Uh, some of it comes back to the town, and, and I, probably the rest goes to the Washington County Sheriff's Department. Or the court. It's the Dinkum Street. Skip, yeah. Skip might have the answer to that. Well, there's an alternative. Those signs can be retrofitted, I believe, to put cameras in. Right. And so that's, you know, you travel to Europe and the UK and things like that. Every intersection has a camera and a speed sign. And they'll photograph your license and record your speed. You know, we can do that. But then we would run afoul, I believe, of the ACLU. Or I think that, yeah, I think your point is really well made. However, I think that a first step, right, is to just have a little bit more presence. presence. I think if actually, you know, presence mm -hmm. would be, would serve as well. Mm -hmm. it's really it's really it's it's, that's the hard part. Unfortunately, yeah, that's the hard part. You know, another thing that we can do is, um, we could, re the Regional Planning Commission has those traffic monitoring cables. We could put a couple of those cables kind of midpoint, and they, they record speed also and the type of vehicle. <clears throat> so we could actually get a record, a, a week-long record of, you know, how, if it's trucks that are speed, are they speeding? Because, you know, when I drive down there, or when I come to any speeding sign, usually when I get to the sign and it's flashing, I'm going too fast, and then I slow down. So, right. but the sign records how fast I was going when I was in front of the sign, um, and even though I slow down, and then I'm, you know when I get past it all, um, I speed up when it can be. Um, so sometimes those signs can be a little bit misleading about actually how fast somebody's going. Sometimes it's obvious they're going over the it's, speed limit. Actually, it's true. The ones in South. South Woodbury, not South Woodbury, uh, where James now says there's a sign there. Right. Right. It's yeah. going to hit you while you're still alone on another boat. So we could monitor what's actually happening once they've actually had the sign flash at them and have gone halfway. Um, you know, they would be probably beyond your house, maybe in, at, right around the corner where there's the last straightaway. Um, we could have, uh, we could request to have um, those monitoring cables put in for a week and then we would have some data on how f fast uh, people are going once they've gone past the signs and we would also have a record of the type of vehicle um, so if it's if it's all these big trucks that are speeding um, it's not all the big trucks it's, it's every pretty it's much mostly. most everybody yeah why don't we try with the washington county shows okay all right so um what time would you say? Five, six to eight, five to eight? Um, we get them, we have them for three hours a week, so. Number eight, it's usually. Pretty quiet, so maybe from 7.30 to five? No, I would say five to, yeah, five to eight. Five you to just eight? said that the trucks come down from the quarry before seven. seven. Before seven. Yeah. I know sometimes I'm down there um, about 6.30 and there are granite trucks headed south. Yeah, that's usually about the time they come off the yeah. first yeah. time. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. It's their first run. And then you said their second truck, their second round usually comes out around 9. Right, yeah, after, yeah, the, after the school. school so where are these actual trucks? Yeah, yeah, I'm saying the uh, plant in Coventry. I don't necessarily think it's, it's these folks. Oh, no. I was going to say they're Canadian trucks. There's they can start going to the air at 5 o'clock in the morning. You've got the Agnew truck. Yeah, they're going to be high trucks full of trash. Oh, really? Yeah, you've got to have some weight in the parking lot for me to open the door. Yeah, they're going to be high trucks full of trash. Oh, really? Yeah, you've got to have some weight in the parking lot for me to open the door. Oh, really? Yeah. So well, really I, don't my attention is the asphalt trucks and the dump trucks. Yeah, because they're, 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 I think they're coming out of Coventry. They're coming out of Coventry. Well, yeah. Actually, they're coming out of Waterford. Oh, Waterford. 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 Wow. That's right. They yeah. must have a paving project. they got to come through here then. Well, the plant in Berlin broke down. Oh, so, they're so, they're the so they're running all the pavement down through here. Right. Mm -hmm. Aren't there interstates in Vermont? Well, yeah. Well, but not over here. <laughs> not over here. You're away from the interstate. There's interstates in Vermont. But they can't run away. Right. right. But they can run away on Route 14, that makes no yeah. sense. Well, and that's not a town, you know, Route 14 is not a town, it's a town issue. It's a state road. 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 It's a state road.
But that's my understanding. But we definitely yeah, share the state highway. Route two and Route three up to our federal highway. Okay. Fed yeah, yeah, that's that's the U.S. sign on. Okay. You know the U.S. emblem. Yeah. yeah. Well, that is. They're a federal. Two. Okay. About eighty nine. That's federal. So it sounds like the first thing we're going to try is to get the Washington County Sheriff's Department there in the morning. In the morning. Yeah. 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 Evening, right there. Okay. I mean, actually, we could use them for a whole bunch of reasons. Both senators also suggested we contact the DOT. Is it DOT? Yeah. 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 Yeah
lead paint building. Um, and I was told by the person from the health department that as long as all of the work and trying to remove the old paint was done by hand, either by scraping or um, sanding, hand sander, not a mechanical sander, that um, everything would go to the gym. And it would be okay. Um, however, there would need to be the need of a plastic apron underneath the work site um, to catch all of the paint that was removed from the building. Um, and then in the guidelines that were sent out, it also mentions in the prohibited work practices that you can't do any dry scraping, which to me is what are you doing? using a scraper and scraping the paint off. So there's a contradiction in, in what um, they're putting out for well, the printed information. The garden hose too, maybe. Right. Yes, right. Um, so it seems like the first thing that we need to do is to get the paint tested and um well I, I had a thought on that i mean okay i, I can just about guarantee you got lead paint on this building right so i don't know if that's i can't use. imagine why how you would not have right, right so why expend so, the funds when was the additional air put on it was in the 70s right well i think it was the 80s so the back yeah. part of that should not have lead paint on it okay all right yeah, put on there Yeah, but it was only half of that. Yeah. It was only half of that. Well, well my, my thought process was, since yeah. it's almost guaranteed, like 100% chance, why, why spend the money and just deal with just mm -hmm. dealing with the less so, so that it's there. I, I was, because I, 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 there's zero chance they're going to come back with no lead in that paint. Maybe a little bit of it, like the rear might not. Yeah, have, the back might not. These three sides would definitely have lead on it. It would be really surprising. If I would be shocked, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'd be shocked if they didn't. All right. So, so, so the key is then switch to using the lead safe practices. Right. Whatever Which actually is. can be actually painting over a lot of that material. Right. right. So Diana, you had done a little bit of research so on I, the show. It was uh, along with the information that the health department uh, provided with a list of contractors to do testing and remediation and so on. And there was one name, of just a man's name, Crafter, he said, well, why not try him first, rather than go to the big firms in Chittenden County, which we used, you know, right here. But anyway, they called the guy and come to find out he does work for one of the big firms in Chittenden County. Right. But <laughs> his name was John Mad Madigan, yeah. and K.A. Uh, Associates. He's the one that did our asbestos testing over here. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, he basically said, because the building is so old, to spend several hundred dollars to have it tested for lead, you know, it's not, not worth mm -hmm. doing. He did point out that, um, like you said, pre-1978, uh, all buildings are assumed to have some less proven otherwise. Uh, but since it's not residential and it's not a daycare, all of the stringent rules of the health department uh, don't necessarily apply. Mm -hmm. um, he did say that the work has to be done in a, a lead safe way, which like you said, includes drop the balls and mm -hmm. wet scraping, you can't dry scrape, you certainly can't grind. But yeah. um, I, I could read those lead safe work practices when when you're finished if, if you want. No, I don't know. Know. Yeah, you did. I, no, I skipped over my okay. mention. I, I can read them now if you'd like, or do you, do you want to finish first? Well, just to teach you, just use a drop cloth. Um, I didn't read anything that said what to do with what's on the drop cloth, but that's something that... Uh, that's the contractor's job. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. So, we use our contractor, we might have to tell him how to do it. He hasn't done it before. So, <laughs> oh, so um, with, with the printout that the health department has concerning lead paint, these are the lead safe work practices. Limit unauthorized access to the work area and close the work area with plastic sheeting or other effective lead dust barriers. Wear protective clothing and, and that's for the benefit of the person doing the work. Uh, mist painted surfaces before disturbing paint. Use manual surface preparation methods. Do not use work practices that could generate dust. 
Follow good hygiene practices before leaving the work area to ensure that lead remains in the work area and is not transported to break areas, public spaces, vehicles, or home. Uh, use housekeeping and cleanup procedures that will leave the work area in a condition that is safe for reoccupancy. Uh, prohibited work practices are dry scraping. So I don't know how you scrape if you... So they're just saying you have to wet it it's first. Just, yeah. Okay, I get it. Yeah, okay. Use of chemical strippers, particularly those containing methylene chloride, open flame burning or torching, heat guns operated above 1100 degrees Fahrenheit, dry sweeping of lead contaminated areas or surfaces. Um, so, um, but those things like encasing the work area, that's not something you would have to do with your outside. Yeah, no, we have to put a sheet on. No, no, no. You have to have a sheet. But on the even ground. what we read is the most, the, the most stringent requirement right. if you're in a daycare center or residential. Right. Right. Yeah, so we would have to sheet the ground. There have, there have to be so that all the chips are caught, and then right. they would be need, need to be put into um, a garbage bag. I, would, I mean, we could find that out, and I would assume you would treat that material as a hazardous material, which, right. which means that. There would be goes through a very specific set of protocols, but that's not that's really not our job and yeah. we contract. Well, we got Richard as our Richard is our contractor. Wow. Richard, so we're just kind of he's not sure. Yeah. He's not. He may be saying he was our contractor. Yeah. 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 So we're gonna. So we're. I don't gonna, think people realize that all that we're gonna do is. Ian's creeping that. It's not gonna look good. Yeah, we're gonna catch. We're gonna catch. Ian's creeping that. It's not gonna look good. Yeah, we're, it's gonna. And it's all built up. So, I mean, the goal is to catch it and keep it. Catch it, catch it, keep it. Yeah, but yeah, but one half inch nine to a wider broad. Yeah, which you can't do. Which you can't really do. I guess there isn't a sealant, is there? Huh? Sealant that you can cover it over. You can paint over it. There is a there is a protocol for without scraping. Yeah, you can paint over it, but if you don't get a lot of this stuff is cracking in. I know. And if you don't get that crack opened up to get some paint in, it's not gonna it's not gonna heal. But when it dries, it's gonna pull back. I agree. Pull back a little bit, and then you're gonna get moisture getting in. The only other fix is you remove all the siding and put new siding on the building. Yeah. Well, well I don't this is a historical building, right? Yep. It is. Yeah. You can get funds. Yeah. You know, they worried about that, but why didn't that come up when they put the money into the historical bill and have to take care of that? What historical bill? Huh? What historical this, bill? This there one. must have been a grant or something to put money into this thing. This, it, oh, yeah, just for the painting was just $2,500 in the budget, and I encouraged them to do that because they thought it needed to be uh, painted. Yeah. yeah, I thought Richard would be a good painter because he's nearby and he's a good painter, but I didn't right. anticipate the lead thing. So, um, when I'm down there, I'll just get a straight downtown. I'm not good about the point of the lead thing. I'm good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. So, so, yeah, if he's willing to, yeah, dry, and, and you can't even dry straight, you have to have a sprayer with you. So, have you done it before with a wet scraping? No. Um, you just spray it. I don't know how I would save the, all the stuff in that tire. Yeah. 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 Y
Robin, this, side, oh, okay. this side of the building, behind you, Robin. Right. The wall behind you and the front of the building. You got this side done. This side is all has been done. And just got to be painted in front. Yeah, you know, to, but it's all been straight. Um, so we got away with that. Well, so far we've gotten away with it. I mean, people could make an issue of it if they wanted to. Yeah, and no. we, the town would be liable. That's, that's, that's why we're trying to address the subject now. Yeah, no, we could, the town could be seriously liable for it. For this, the town could be seriously liable. That's my concern. Right, because I think one of the there's somebody that lives in this building has Lyme disease and they're ill. Um, They've got a compromised immune system. Lead poisoning is not going to happen, right. and they might have a case. No. Well, even if yeah, somebody the rules are very clear that we yeah. can't just do it anyway. If somebody in town who doesn't live right next door raised an issue, they would have also a valid right. reason because it's lead paint. Yeah, yeah. 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 unfortunate to rats. Right. So, so you want to do it right. Right. Yeah. Right. right. We don't have a choice. So, I mean, one so, scenario is to have what's been scraped painted and then just we figure out what we're doing. Yeah. We can put plankton on. Right. Yeah. Well, now that it's if it's on the yeah. national registry, well, we yeah. 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 I don't know about that. I don't think we're going to get federal money. They're going to get federal money. They can try. So what I tried to do is all the donations we did. If you didn't take any money, but I'm not advocating that. I'm just saying. Right. I mean, our other option, we do nothing, then the paint falls off the building. It rots. Yeah, well, I, I think we could survive a year or two oh, yeah. the way it is. Um, so we just need to figure out what the best thing to do is and finish up what's been done so that at least that wall. Yeah. And. Um, I have taken me no longer than my grandma. I haven't done the window yet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you haven't. Scraped and done the windows. I, I would say leave just leave them alone. Ah, uh, leave them alone. Do you give me the okay? Yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. just, but just leave them. But I know when I, if I scrape my hand, it's gonna be longer. I was yeah. Hand. Yeah. It ain't gonna work so good. Okay. Are you willing to do it though? Are you willing to do the scraping by hand using the spray? If the money's there, I'll do anything. Hey, that's not yet. That's not the money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If the money ain't there. He will do it. <laughs> 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 and we we it it's not going to get straight and pay yeah. that. that. We just yeah. do that. It's not going to work. Because I think any other solution takes years. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And costs a lot of money. So, um, so I, if, I, I think if you're willing to scrape it wet and put the tarp down, I think that's the route we go. You get it painted. Because again, any other solution I can think of is going to take us a while to implement. Uh, they want to scrape my hand too. So that's going to be Right, we're gonna have to pay. We're just gonna have to pay for it. Yeah. yeah. So right, maybe you can do the front and then see where we are. Yeah, get this side done. Need the front. another year for another side in the back peak. You know, that's we'll pretty wait. bad, but it's nobody mm -hmm. sees it. We wait. We wait. So we wait on that. What? I said we would wait. We just wait. So I guess work till like twenty five hundred or whatever. So you're gonna have somebody come from the state to get up there? Nope. No. We're gonna assume it's lead. Ah, yeah, we just assumed it's all lead. Okay. And the little applicator thing sort of told us that. It's so, like, no. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess buy some plastic, a roll of plastic, and. Um, or cloth, drop cloth. No, the paint tends, and the dust tends to stick to cloth, to cloth. Canvas. Yeah. So I would recommend plastic. So we'll pay for it. We'll pay for it. We'll pay for it. We'll use the drop cloth to make the ink on the wall. The wind on the wall of plastic. Well, you'll have to put some rocks down the hole. You'll have to figure out how you hold it down. So I'm going to have to take off a couple pieces of green. Now, you can show it to you. Exactly. I'm going to cover it around and cover it. Let him do it. Yeah. So you think the drop cloth will not work? I think it will. I mean, I think my opinion is that. Let him do what he thinks he should do to capture the paint. Right. 
since I'm not a painter and my advice would be worthless. Mm -hmm. But I, I guess. That makes sense that the drop slot would stay. It like, would stick better. It's going to stick. And you're going to have to have your ladder on top of it. Correct. I would say buy a drop, I mean, if you're going to use a drop cloth, buy one, use it, and then when you're done with it, throw it in the bag with the pink chips. Just consider. I, I can get, I can get the drop cloth. <clears throat> well, I've got an account at Coolins. <laughs> yeah, well, I, yeah. But I don't want you to use your own drop cloths and then reuse them somewhere else. Because you worry about it. Well, I know you aren't worried about it, but. <laughs> The rest of the world is, um, you know, and if, you know, if you use it in somebody's house, so uh, it's going to have lead in it. It'll have lead dust in it. Or you got to me one you to be. Well, you can do whatever you want to start your own person is concerned. Feel it, right? You got even paper. But I think the towel could spring for a brown cloth that you could just throw away in, in the end because it's going to be filled with. Now, the other thing is, you used to be plastic and, and then it rained or something and the wind blew all in and yeah, that yeah. plastic is. Well, when you all can walk and walk and walk and walk. You have to, you have to empty, every time you were done scraping, you'd have to empty the plastic out. You would, well, not you would that, have, if you're going to spray every inch of it, you get that water on there, something will be on the head. You'd have to move the plastic away, it would be a pain yeah. in the butt, I agree. Um, but that's what you would have to do. Because the water would just, the lid would just run right off the plastic and right. defeat so the purpose. Yeah, so, yeah, it makes the whole thing, you know, a big headache and a lot more time consuming to do. But um, if we're going to do it, we should probably. And no good deed goes unpunished. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you're ready to do that. Thanks for volunteering. Wow. But if you don't want to take it to the front, and I'm telling you if I can do it. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's just money and tell us where we land. Yeah. Keep track of your hours, and, and you know, um, obviously you probably have an hourly rate. You gave us a, a general figure, so when you're getting to the end of that total figure that you gave us, then you're then you're done. Um, and my, yeah. Or if we don't finish, you can come back and take another six hours and we'll yeah. 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 something. But. I'll fax the bottom and won't be so bad. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, um, just a small tag um, on this. There is a, it does sound like we have a committee now to um, explore uh, renovations to the town hall. Um, Mary Jo Allen has agreed to leave the, um, Lou Allen, I'm sorry to lead this committee. Um, she is seeing if Liz, Liz Pritchett, um, she approached Liz about this, a former Woodbury resident um, who has quite a bit of knowledge of historical buildings. Um, if she would be willing, and she said she was interested, but I think she didn't have a confirmation. Diana is interested in being on it. Um, I, I guess I would be on it as a select board member. I would love still to have a, somebody from the fire department to be on the committee. Um, and that would pretty much... And Robin. And Robin, right. Sorry, Robin. I knew there was someone else. <laughs> so, um, and what we, what we would be doing, basically, I think I explained this last time, is basically just getting a sense of what would be needed for permits, for, you know, some type of plan. Um, there would be nothing really other than a plan for how, um, you know, what's kind of figuring out what would be needed as far as information um, for the renovations, um, what type of permits might be needed, and what, the, what it means to be on the National Registry as a historic building and, and what kind of limitations there are um, with that, which is uh, Mary Jo's and Liz's kind of domain. Um, There's uh, also, um, you guys probably have to discuss what future you see for use of this building. Right. I think in the pre-COVID or post-COVID era, you're going to want to use it more in the winter? That's the whole impetus for this whole okay. idea, yeah. I, okay. As far as I'm concerned, um, I no longer feel that the space at the town office, I mean, it was always sort of inadequate anyway. It was so small. 
Um, but now it's, you know, there's a whole another dimension to that small there is, stuff. there is a community room which is used for other purposes um, you know, right now there's a book sale there um, so and that's probably what we will use this winter if we're actually even still meeting in person I mean that's a big question too at the moment um, so um, you know up, up to a certain point the legislature I, I um, so, so, and um, Mary Jo is pretty busy with the project right at the moment, but she mentioned in a week or two that that would be done, and so we're, we'll probably be trying to meet for a first meeting um, in a couple of weeks. Um, so since Mary doesn't have time, we can be looking around for another energy advisor. Right. Or somebody to advise with. I did call. I did call Efficiency Vermont, um, and I spoke with someone from there, and they have, um, and someone was supposed to get back to me, a regional person, who hasn't met. And I called about a week ago. It was Tuesday of last week that I called and spoke with someone, but they have um, kind of a two-step program that they would do. They have um, what they call an energy assessment, and it's mostly geared towards electricity, but um, they would probably we we'll also maybe take into consideration heating um, energy, but, and that's free from Efficiency Vermont. They would come and do an energy assessment for, um, and I was sort of hinting that maybe we would do the town hall, the town office, and the town garage. Um, if it's free, um, can't hurt to have them look at all. They could do all three sites and in a in in visit, you know, day long visit. Then the. the um, the next part, which isn't free, is an energy audit, which is basically hiring um, a contractor that's on an approved list from Efficiency Vermont. I did this for my house years ago. And they would come and do a, a, a series of tests. Um, um, and it's geared more towards uh, heating and you know, energy efficiency for a building um, rather than electricity. Um, and then the contractor would have a series of suggestions um, which um, we could take up one at a time. Um, we don't have to do them all at once. Um, uh, but that's, that's kind of out of ways. I think you know, having this assessment happen first would um, give us information, uh, especially you know, for the town hall. Um, and, uh, um, and, and you know, for the town office too. Those are the two that I'm thinking of mostly. Uh, but can't hurt to have them look at the town garage too. Um, so, well, tw 30 years from now maybe. <laughs> when we're all dead. <laughs> um, but, or moved on, let's say. Um, so how does that, I mean, um, as far as, you know, uh, energy assessment, they could do that any time. We don't have to wait for this Might committee. Well. Uh, do it here. Yeah, you'll have it. What is there for them to look at? Yeah. Nothing, they don't nothing. Well, they know what to look at. I know. Um, yeah. We don't use electricity. We don't. We have lights. Right. And the town, the town office is a different story with the computers and, and you know, the heating system there. Mm -hmm. um, and the wind, you know, the, the building itself. Um, I'd say do it sooner than Yeah, better. it's free, so um, it's not going to cost soon us anything. Soon soon we we schedule it, we should do it. Okay, all right. Well, you see here that if you talk property window insulation, you can still have Well, you can't keep this place warm in the winter. No, you can't. No, it's freezing. Well, we know. We freeze to death in here. Yeah. So, all right, so all. Walls, floor, or ceiling? No. The, whole, the whole building, really. I mean, this was built in a time when people didn't worry about <laughs> the, the, the heat. Yeah. Yeah. The hot fire, the hot fire. Yeah, I'm sure there was a pretty, pretty big wood stove in here. Put it sort of pipe ran, probably ran through the building, um, like the old churches. Well, I used to not, didn't sit next to the stove here in town meeting, that's all I can tell you. <laughs> so, burned to death. Okay, so um, so I will bug them and because they did tell me somebody would get back in. So, yeah. Thanks, sir. Um, so anything else about the town hall? I'm good. Good. I think we beat it up. We're good. Okay. So do we want to?
jump back to the tax rate? Yes, we do. Okay. Okay. You folks have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Nice nice Take good care. You too. This is our total. Okay. Okay. So you do the math for us too. There's the backup. These are the numbers from the education. This is okay. what the backing of the tax bill is going to look like. The totals. Okay. And there's that. All right. Thank you very much. Sorry. So um, it's like the amount is pretty much the same. Um, okay. So we're just looking at point zero so we're, five. We're, we're, tonight we're setting the municipal tax rate, not the tax rate from the, for this education for the schools. Um, so this is just the municipal tax rate that we be setting. Um, so and we're looking at this number point five four two. Yes. So um, I'll make that motion. Okay. And we set the tax rate at point zero five. For two per thousand, okay. right? Per thousand. Per thousand. Okay. Chris will second that motion. All right. Any further discussion at all? How does that compare to last year? It was point zero five three three last year. It's up a little bit, but not much. Okay. We did all right. Okay. We'll be back. Coming okay. soon to the theater near you. Yeah. Any any other discussion? So do I hear a motion, um, or do I hear? Um, we got the second. All those in favor of the motion, uh, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All right. So the tax rate is set at zero point five four two. Great. All right. So um, just quickly, um, there really isn't much for updates, but I thought I would just make the statements. Um, Personnel policy. I did actually hear back from somebody from VLCT, and they said that they're it's vacation time for the lawyers, but they would hear back from us soon. So um, stay tuned. It's the story of my life. Just wait. Uh, and then I did send an email to Patty Garbeck, the uh, cemetery commission chair, if they had heard anything at all from um, Bear Bissett about the new plans that he was going to come up with. And they have not heard anything at all from Bear. So those things are just kind of. Uh, yeah. So Chris, Chris is just going to interject for a second. Okay. I apologize. Um, I think we will have an update for the next select like, meeting about exact spaces and a delineation of new mapping okay. for the West Woodbury right. Center. So, so um, okay. we'll, uh, we'll have something to present. All right. Good. Because, uh, it's bad. You took some people up there? I did. I took, a student, I, took, I took a student up there. It seems like a very easy and... I'm sorry. I took two students with me up there. And I think that there's a very easy, very easy extension on that cemetery based on the, on the type of materials that we saw. But um, we have some augers studies that we've done and we have some ground penetrating radar that we did to identify previous old grave sites as well as an extension on the cemetery um, because it's not mapped at all i think miss brandy will agree with me that it's uh, uh it's basically it's basically a set of plot lines that are absolutely not accurate so I think after this is done, it will be a fairly, we'll at least have the data to make a, a good discussion out of it. Okay. Um, but it's, uh, all we've done is provide the data and I think we can move on from there. Okay. Do you have a sense of, from um, the, the landowners that the landowners, the landowners where the new new border would be because they were going to change the plan for the extension of the cemetery. No, so there is no plan on exchanging, excuse me, extending the original plan. Okay, it's the same plan that they had originally developed, which is an extension of about fifteen meters up slope. Okay, so in the last discussion that we had with the landowners. Um, 
there was issues about a stream and a well, and Bear Bissett had mentioned that he would come up with a plan to extend the uh, cemetery in a different direction that would eliminate those two issues. That's correct. Um, so, and so, so far, it's my understanding that we don't have that plan. We don't have that plan, no. but I think that that plan is what will show right. up in this next okay. presentation. And I know one of the concerns was, well, what's underneath the ground? Is there a ledge there? So I don't know. No ledge. That, he, he, he did he check that. Yep. Okay. So there is absolutely no ledge there. Okay, whatsoever. great. We're good. So okay. that part's so we're easy. good there. All right. And, and I shared, I think, a letter from VLCT um, at the last meeting, maybe the meeting before, um, that it is basically up to the select board to... Right, we're the fiduciary. Yeah, we're the fiduciary. So if, if we're going to go through the expense of the surveying, uh, blah, 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 um, that's a decision that the select board um, should make as opposed to the cemetery commission. Um, and I think just based on the, what I heard that night with the landowners, uh, and you know, it's not that we're voting on that right now, but um, I would be in favor of um, having the town, um, you know, pay for the cost to have the. the we some, some yeah. of the no, we have to figure that yeah. out. Yeah. We're running out of space. We're kind of up against yeah. it. Yeah. So. There's no more. Yeah. There's no more space in there. I, I, I basically know where the meets are going to be. I'm pretty confident that at the, at the at the next meeting, you will have seen all that data. Good. Okay. So it will be basically for free. Okay. All right. It'll already have been surveyed in with depth profiles as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. It was an interesting student project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. great um, just, well, I'll let you know after the meeting. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's actually another project that uh, using those same tools that um, the road crew is thinking about for you. Sounds good. Anyway, I'll share that after. So, um, anything else about the cemetery at all? Um, okay. So, um, briefly, I thought, um, you know, we might just briefly discuss uh, what's happening in the world of the Delta COVID variant. Um, there, I know that there are a number of um, entities that are uh, beginning to be concerned about um, COVID, and I just wanted to just have some thoughts on what we should do as a town is, and, you know, partly just for the select board meetings or any, any um, town government meetings, um, do we want to kind of wait for the state? Um, you know, I mean, I think our governor and his crew did a wonderful job getting us through the first round. And when there are concerns that they have, um, it seems obvious that we would follow the guidelines. Um, I mean, it's hard at the public meeting. We can't change that unless the legislature does another right. vote. Pro yeah. yeah. But we can, um, you know, if, if things continue to get worse, um, we could go back to some of the practices that we had beforehand, um, physical spacing, uh, mask wearing, uh, having a sign-up sheet so that there could be some contact I'm not tracing. a big fan of any of those things, yeah. just, just because I went through the vaccination process and... Yeah. This well, with this, we with, the, with this new variant, um, there does seem to be, I'm trying to remember the term, um, it's cross something or other, crossing over, crossover, I think. Is yeah, I know. But I mean, I worked through the whole pandemic, transported COVID people yeah. up to my eyeballs in it, and so yeah. I'm still here. Yeah. Were you vaccinated? Yeah. yeah. Even prior to vaccination, I was transporting COVID patients, so I'm just... Yeah. I understand this Lambda variant is children more... Yes, younger. younger. More susceptible. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I am definitely... Um, well, I'm in favor of whatever is the best practice for everybody involved. Um, so, and you know, I don't like wearing a mask any more than anyone else does. Um, but if it's necessary to protect other people, then I will wear a mask. Um, I know it could be a personal choice, but I don't disagree. Yeah. Um, but I do think that the guidance from the state is usually pretty robust. Mm -hmm. yeah. and if we, follow, do that, if we yeah. follow those guidelines, okay. I think that we're doing best practices. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to stick with the guidelines from the state yeah, okay. as best as we can. All right. Yeah, no, that would, I would, I would be fine with it. Personal. 
how do our town office <clears throat> people feel um, about what's happening? You're all good there. Who are the state guidelines? We took down the, the field, some of them, which could be put up. It became a concern, but people come in the office, they don't mind wearing a mask if they have to, but they don't have to. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll kind of wait and see what the state guidelines are. I'm fine with that too. Um, yeah, we'll try to, as long as the weather holds up, we'll try to have the windows open so we have pretty good circulation. Um, Almost everybody, I mean, I'm just not that concerned right now. So okay. Because everyone's vaccinated. Yeah. I don't see a lot of people getting sick with yeah. that, and so I just... Yeah. There are a couple, yeah, there are a few around. Yeah. 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 So. Even six-foot distancing is not that big a deal in a room like this. Right. You won't see me going to huge crowds and cuddling up with everybody, I will say mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Sounds like a good plan. Okay. Good plan, but just be smart. All right. Good. Thank you for having us. Well, um, well, we're definitely not Death Santis. Death right. Santis. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any other business that anybody would like to bring up? I think I'm out. Okay. Good for me. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. Any further discussion on adjournment? Okay. All those in favor? Please stop. Bye. 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 Okay. So we're done.